Hello and welcome to the 2024 Specialty Crop Block Grant Program, or SCBGP, webinar. This first presentation will cover the solicitation process and will provide an overview of the entire grant solicitation process. In preparing to submit a concept proposal, the first and most important thing to do is read the Request for Concept Proposals, or RFCP. What we are reviewing today is covered in greater detail in the RFCP for the program. The areas covered are listed here and include information about the program, the solicitation timeline, how to apply, and frequently asked questions. Please note that the timelines and requirements will differ slightly for the Additional Assistance for Historically Underrepresented Organizations Program, also referred to as the Additional Assistance Program. The purpose of the Specialty Crops Block Grant Program is to enhance the competitiveness of California specialty crops. This means that a proposed project must pertain to issues that affect the specialty crop industry and focus on improving the competitiveness of specialty crops. For a project to be allowable under this program, the proposal must clearly demonstrate that all activities and costs benefit the specialty crop industry rather than directly benefit or provide a profit to a single organization, institution, or individual. If you are already familiar with the SCBGP, here are a few of the changes to the program this year. Several program priorities have been lightly updated. Please review them carefully when selecting a program priority or priorities for your project. There have been some minor changes to the allowable and unallowable costs and activities table. As always, we recommend you refer to the current table as you prepare your proposal. Also, additional states were included in Travel Ban AB 1887. Finally, we have made a few updates to the Amplifund application. It now includes an unscored question requesting a brief description of the applicant organization. The performance plan section is no longer included in the concept proposal. We'd also like to briefly highlight some updates to the Additional Assistance Program. This program is part of the SCBGP, and the intent is to facilitate the participation of organizations that have been historically underrepresented in the SCBGP. If you are a first-time applicant to the SCBGP, it is not mandatory you apply to the Additional Assistance Program. However, organizations who do apply to the Additional Assistance Program cannot apply to any other funding category. This year, the Additional Assistance Program has its own RFCP with separate submission deadlines and eligibility criteria. Today, we will provide a brief overview of the program in this webinar, as it will be a separate presentation for the Additional Assistance Program. We recommend attending this webinar for those considering applying to the Additional Assistance. K-12 school districts are now eligible to apply to the Additional Assistance Program in addition to nonprofit organizations and tribal governments, both federally and non-federally recognized. Most importantly, we would like to emphasize that applicants to the Additional Assistance Program are eligible to receive one-on-one -on -one technical assistance during the concept proposal process and beyond. We highly encourage you to email grants at cdfa.ca.gov as soon as possible to begin receiving this assistance in the form of email, phone call, office hours, or video call. Please note that to be eligible to apply, the proposal must either focus on supporting underserved and beginning farmers or providing nutrition education and or access to specialty crops in underserved communities. Concept proposals selected for advancement in this program will re receive assistance from CDFA in developing a full proposal for submission to the USDA. Proposals can request between $100,000 and $250,000 in funding. For more information, please refer to the separate Additional Assistance Program RFCP or attend one of the Additional Assistance Program webinars. Again, we would like to encourage interested applicants to email grants at cdfa.ca.gov as soon as possible to begin receiving one-on-one -on -one assistance in the form of email, phone call, or video call. So, what are specialty crops? Specialty crops are defined as vegetables, tree nuts, and fruits, including dried fruits, culinary and medicinal herbs and spices, and nursery, floriculture, and horticulture crops. 
Funds must not benefit non-specialty crops, such as dairy, livestock, or any other ineligible commodities. Please note that cannabis is not a specialty crop. A list of eligible and ineligible commodities can be found on the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA, website, and is also included with the materials in the handouts tab on the GoToWebinar dashboard. This list is not intended to be all-inclusive, but rather to give examples of the most common specialty crops. If there is a commodity you are questioning that is not on the eligible specialty crops list, please send us an email and we will be happy to ask the USDA for clarification. This is how funding for the program works. The USDA receives funding from the Farm Bill, then approved funding goes to CDFA, and CDFA subawards funds to recipients. The 2018 Farm Bill contains provisions for the continuation of this program. However, as of the date of this webinar, Congress has not passed a new Farm Bill or a continuing budget resolution to reauthorize funding for the program. While CDFA anticipates continued funding for the program as described in the 2018 Farm Bill, grant awards will only be made if continuing authorization for the program is established and funds are made available by USDA AMS. To provide an idea of the program's competitiveness, historically, CDFA has funded approximately 23% of proposals submitted. In 2023, CDFA received approximately $23 million. Expecting roughly the same amount this year, CDFA will award grant funds to projects ranging from $100,000 to $500,000. Please note that CDFA reserves the right to offer an award amount less than the amount requested. In addition, the grant duration is two years, eight months, beginning November 1st, 2024, and ending June 30th, 2027. Entities eligible to apply to the SCBGP include nonprofit and for profit organizations, local, state, federal, and tribal government entities, and public and private colleges and universities. Importantly, individuals may not apply. An individual is someone submitting an application on their own behalf rather than as a representative of an organization or institution. If you are an individual and you have an idea for a project, we encourage you to partner with some one or more eligible organizations. Note again that the eligibility for the Additional Assistance Program is more limited. Please refer to the Additional Assistance RFCP for more information or email grants at cdfa.ca.gov to request more information. The solicitation process is a two phase process. In phase one, Applicants submit concept proposals for their projects. Proposals go through an administrative and technical review. And applicants with successful proposals are invited to participate in phase two, submission of a grant proposal. CDFA will advise all applicants whether they are invited to submit a grant proposal. In phase two, applicants submit a grant proposal that contains a more detailed description of their projects. For applicants invited back, the feedback from the administrative and the technical reviews will be made available to assist in preparation of the grant proposal. For all other applicants, the feedback will be provided within 60 days. Proposals that are successful in phase two will be submitted to the USDA for review. Once the USDA announces awards, we notify both the successful and unsuccessful applicants. Feedback from the review process will be provided for unsuccessful applicants and grant agreements will be initiated for applicants that will be awarded funds. As mentioned, concept and grant proposals undergo two levels of review, the administrative review and the technical review. The administrative review is an internal review conducted by CDFA to verify proposal completeness and eligibility requirements in accordance with program guidelines such as, were all the questions answered, is the budget section complete, were all the costs allowable, etc. The technical review is an external review conducted by a committee comprised of growers and representatives from the industry. Technical review committee members use their expertise to evaluate proposals based on individual merit and consider many factors, including if the proposed project is a priority for the specialty crop industry and the proposal's likelihood for success. 
Please note that the press release solicited technical reviewers, along with the application and instructions, are currently available on the CDFA SEBGP website. We encourage those who are interested in participating as a technical reviewer to visit our website for more information. If you have questions about being a technical reviewer, please contact us via the grants email at grants at cdfa.ca.gov. As noted in the beginning, the timeline for the entire solicitation process can be found in the RFCP. Please note that concept proposals are due on Thursday, September 7th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and that late submissions will not be accepted. As a reminder, the Additional Assistance Program has a separate submission deadline. Applicants will be notified in December whether they invited to Phase 2 and will have approximately one month to submit grant proposals. The Technical Review Committee has about the same amount of time to review grant proposals and submit recommendations to CDFA in early 2024. CDFA will submit the proposal recommendations to the USDA in May and wait for the USDA's final say regarding which projects receive funding. We anticipate announcing and awarding funds in the fall of 2024. SCBGP has three funding areas, market enhancement, access, education, and training, and research. You can see them all on this slide. Within each funding area, there are one or two funding categories. As part of the concept proposal, applicants must select the funding category for which their project is most appropriate. Further, each funding category contains several program priorities. Projects must address at least one of the program priorities listed under the selected funding category. For example, if an applicant determines their project best fits in research category A, which is environmental stewardship, conservation, and climate smart agriculture, they will need to also select at least one program priority within that funding category. The program priorities are listed on the next few slides, but most importantly, can also be found in the RFCP. This year, CDFA will again award funds to the Additional Assistance Program, and its funding categories will be discussed in detail later. Within the Market Enhancement Funding Area, there is only one funding category. Category A, which is called Grown in California. Proposals submitted to this category should enhance the marketability and long-term competitiveness of specialty crops by leveraging the unique qualities of specialty crops grown in California. In other words, they should highlight the unique qualities and characteristics of specialty crops because they are grown in California. There are seven program priorities within this funding category. This slide shows the first four. Here are the remaining three. Although we won't review the program priorities here, please reference the RFCP and read each one carefully to determine which program priority or priorities are appropriate for your project. The next funding area is Access, Education, and Training. This funding area has two categories. Funding category A is called Healthy Specialty Crops for All Californians. Proposals submitted in this category should improve access to and consumption of specialty crops in underserved communities and or improve the public's knowledge and understanding of specialty crop agriculture and its importance to the health and well-being of all Californians. There are six program priorities in this category. Here are the first three. Here are the remaining program priorities for access, education, and training category A. Again, please review the RFCP to read them in detail. Funding category B in the Access, Education, and Training funding area is Equity, Opportunity, and Education for All California Specialty Crop Farmers. Proposals submitted to this funding category should benefit current and future specialty crop farmers by providing education and training, including improving equity through culturally appropriate education and training for underserved farmers in areas including business development and regulatory compliance. There are seven program priorities in this funding category. This slide shows the first three. And here are the last four. 
The last funding area, research, has three funding categories. Funding category A is called environmental stewardship, conservation, and climate smart agriculture. Proposals submitted to this category should address specialty crop agriculture's potential to mitigate and or adapt to climate change, contribute to the conservation of agricultural land and water, and or enhance soil health. This funding category has six program priorities. Here are the first three. And here are the other three program priorities for research category A. Funding category B in the research funding area is called plant health and pest management. Proposals submitted to this funding category should address pests and disease that affect the production of California's specialty crops. There are five program priorities in this category. The final funding category in the research funding area is category C, food safety. For this funding category, CDFA partners with the Center for Produce Safety, or CPS, to utilize the technical expertise of their grant reviewers in the area of food safety. The Center for Produce Safety releases a separate solicitation, conducts a technical review, and submits recommendations to CDFA. Please visit their website for more information. In addition, CPS contact information is provided in the RFCP and at the end of this presentation for those interested in submitting a food safety proposal. The Additional Assistance Program has two funding categories. These can be found in the 2024 SCBGP RFCP for the Additional Assistance Program located on the SCBGP website. The first funding category is Healthy Specialty Crops for All Californians. Proposals submitted to this category should seek to increase access to and consumption of healthy and safe California specialty crops for improved nutrition and overall health. The Healthy Specialty Crops for All Californians category has eight priorities. The first four are on this slide. And here are the remaining four priorities. The second funding category is called Equity, Opportunity, and Education for All California Specialty Crop Farmers. Proposals submitted to this category should benefit beginning and or underserved specialty crop farmers through education and training and increase underserved farmer engagement with agricultural industry. This category has 11 priorities and the first four are listed here. Here are three more priorities. Here are the final four priorities for this category. Again, please review the additional assistance request for concept proposals for detail on program priorities for the two funding categories. Concept proposals for the SCBGP are submitted through a web-based application called Amplifund. All proposals must be submitted electronically using the Amplifund platform, with the exception of the additional assistance proposals, which have a separate application. Again, please refer to the separate additional assistance RFCP or attend one of the additional assistance program webinars for more information on the application process for that program. For all other applications, each applicant will need to set up a user account to access Amplifund. A walkthrough of how to use Amplifund will be covered later today in the webinar. A complete concept proposal must provide information for each of the areas listed here. As mentioned before, the Amplifund concept proposal and outcome measures and budget sections webinar cover the elements of the concept proposal in detail. Please note, at this time, the USDA has not provided CDFA or any other State Department of Agriculture with a request for applications or the terms and conditions for the 2024 Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. If necessary, CDFA will prepare and make available a supplement to the RFCP 
to advise applicants of any changes to the program upon receipt of the USDA's request for applications. CDFA and all applicants will be subject to the terms and conditions of the USDA's request for applications and terms and conditions. Because funding for the SCBGP is provided by the federal government, all organizations submitting concept proposals to the SCBGP are subject to the federal cost principles. Federal cost principles are regulations based on organization type used to determine allowable costs and ensure consistent treatment of costs. Applicants are responsible for identifying the federal cost principles appropriate to their organization and ensuring consistent application of the cost principles to the SCPGP grant funds. All organizations other than for-profit organizations are subject to the administrative requirements and cost principles in the 2 CFR 200. For-profit organizations are subject to the 48 CFR subpart 31.2. Links to these regulations have been provided in the RFCP. However, to help simplify the interpretations of these regulations, we have prepared an allowable and unallowable costs and activities ref table reference. The table provides overall guidance for handling of common costs and includes USDA and CDFA requirements specific to this program. A copy has been provided in the handouts tab and a link to the online document is provided in the RFCP. Please note the proposals with unallowable costs may be subject to disqualification, so we strongly encourage you to make use of this reference. Please be aware that any of the following may also result in the disqualification of a concept proposal. Proposals from individual applicants, incomplete proposals, including proposals with one or more unanswered questions, proposals that include activities outside of the grant duration, Proposals for less than the minimum award amount or more than the maximum award amount. Proposals that benefit a single organization or entity. Proposals with unallowable costs or activity is necessary to complete the project objectives, which includes indirect costs that exceed the limit set forth in the RFCP. Proposals submitted to the Additional Assistance Program by organizations that are ineligible to apply. We would also like to note that having an active exclusion in the Federal System for Award Management, or SAM, may also be grounds for disqualification of a proposal. To learn more about registering in SAM or to determine your organization's current status, please visit SAM.gov. Please continue to submit your questions through the Questions tab, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. In addition, we will conduct three rounds of questions and answers, or Q&A. Any questions that you may have after the webinar can be submitted via email to grants at cdfa.ca.gov at any time during the Q&A process. To ensure everyone has an equal opportunity to receive the same information, we do request that questions received outside of our webinars be in writing. New questions and answers will be posted each week beginning on Friday, August 25th, 2023. The final deadline to submit questions is August 31st, 2023 at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Here are some of the resources that were discussed in this presentation. A good place to start is the CDFA SEBGP website. A link to the recordings of our webinars will be posted on our website by Friday, August 25th. Another resource to submit questions to is the CDFA grants email address. We've also provided the website and phone number for the Center for Produce Safety. Additionally, the USDA AMS website contains a lot of great information about the SCBGP. However, please note that you should direct all questions to CDFA as USDA will always refer you back to us. That concludes the solicitation presentation.